Let's go back to meteorologist Don Schwinnaker now and talk about, uh, again, where the storm is going and what we need to be doing, or what those folks in the path need to be doing. Well, you know, I was talking with Scott Dean. Uh, he called in, in between his live shots, and we were talking about that impressive wind on the backside of it. Not only are you seeing that 80-plus mile an hour wind, a lot of times as the rain falls through the atmosphere, it will pull air with it. And uh, it, what do we say? Is there a problem with one of my microphones? Okay, okay. Uh, anyway, we spoke with uh, uh, Scott Dean, and he said a lot of times that rain coming through will pull air down with the wind. So that was increasing it to about 100 miles an hour. Wait till you see what we're seeing as far as some of the rainfall totals go and some of the wind speeds go. We get things started, though, with a look at what's happening on radar at this hour and the shower activity continuing to move up to the, to the north and to the east. All the shower activity uh, moving off to the north and east. And All right, Don, we're having trouble still with your microphone. Okay. We're going to work on that uh, in the meantime. Let's tell you some other things going on around the viewing area. As we mentioned about uh, 30 minutes ago, emergency officials in Nash County reporting a fatality. Uh, a large limb blown down by high winds in Nashville uh, struck and killed a man around 10:20 this morning in Nash County. That was one of, uh, I believe we've had maybe two or three other fatalities as well. Yeah, I think so. One surfer and then another person as well. Also, want to let you know about some of the power outages. Wake Electric reporting approximately 2,420 power outages resulting from the hurricane. A, major, a majority of those outages in Wake County. So people here, not just on the coast, uh, suffering some power outages right now. All right, Don's got his microphone ready and he's ready to go. Don? All right, so anyway, uh, we're talking about the storm continuing to work through and uh, the wind speed on the backside very important impressive some reports coming in as much as 100 miles an hour. Uh, this is the Doppler radar as the eye continues to work through Pamlico Sound and on up toward Bellhaven. It'll cross Nags Head over the next two hours or so. We're going to stop the motion of the radar. Let's slide off to the south and as we do we'll turn the storm reports on. Now this is a new feature where we can actually see the reports as they come in and just in the past three hours we have seen uh, the storm reports uh, showing up with uh, uh, all kinds of wind. Let's go into Moorhead City. That's so that's where we'll get things started. We'll come down into the Moorhead City area and you'll notice right there the little kind of purple dots there. If we click on one of those dots, those are actual storm reports. So look at this one just off the coast. This happened about 1035. This is about an hour and a half ago. Wind gusts of 101 miles per hour being reported at Atlantic Beach. That was right when Scott Dean was doing his live shot. You could just see him getting pounded there. Uh, we're also getting a report Highway 70 and Merriman Road near East Carteret High School. Impassable due to debris and trees blocking the road. And then also a report of a tree down that's over two and a half feet in diameter on Nine Mile Road. That's impossible down there as well. You heard the governor speaking about all of those areas that are dealing with closed roads. Now let's move it back to the triangle and show you some of the storm reports we're getting in in the triangle right now in eastern Wake County. Uh, we are seeing a storm report of non thunderstorm wind damage, a four inch tree on a house that's on uh, Ives Court in Clayton. That's being reported and Clayton Public Safety reporting trees down on the road at 1658 Amelia Church Road. So those are just a couple of the spots in our area that continue to see uh, storm reports coming in. And as the National Weather Service gets these storm reports, they continue to pass them along to us. All right, we'll clear that off the screen and talk about what we're seeing on radar right now. The latest uh, Doppler radar image showing the shower activity, heaviest shower activity working from Rocky Mount toward Wilson. All of that shower activity continuing to slide off to the south. We'll zoom down in and put this into motion. Watch what happens as we see uh, this moving. It just keeps going over the same spot. So we get one area, big area of showers, and then another area and another area. And look at some of the rainfall totals coming in. We'll stop the motion of the radar. We'll take a look at uh, these are Doppler radar estimates on how much rain we have seen. We can actually look at the different colors. Look at south of Greenville right now. Uh, it's four, almost five inches. Goldsboro reporting four and a half inches. Wilson, 3.2 inches. Rocky Mount so far, 4.2 inches. Eastern Wake County is showing 2.4 inches. Downtown Raleigh at this hour, an inch and a half. Then you get out around Durham, less than a half inch of rain there. Because of all that rain in the eastern county, the National Weather Service issuing flash flood warnings now for Halifax, Edgecombe, Nash, uh, on into Wilson County. We're also seeing it in Johnston County, Wayne County, and Sampson County, all under flash flood warnings. Those run through noon. 
I wouldn't be surprised if some of those get extended into the afternoon and evening hours. We're about 10 minutes from noon and the National Weather Service will extend. I would believe many of those because they're still seeing heavy rainfall over those counties. We also have a high wind warning in effect for the same counties. Wind gusts coming in as high as 60 miles an hour in Goldsboro had a 63 there. 50 mile plus per hour in Rocky Mount and also uh, the Wilson Rocky Mount Wilson Airport and R Roanoke Rapids with a 50 plus earlier and then a wind advisory for Wake County and Cumberland County. Both of those counties under a wind advisory 30 to 40 mile an hour wind and that wind advisory extends from the Virginia border uh, Granville Vance and Warren counties down through Franklin Wake Harnett and Cumberland County all under a wind advisory through this evening. This is a look at what's going on on the latest satellite picture for that. I bring in Chief Meteorologist Chris Holman. Tag your it. <laughs> shift change here. Uh, no, but Chris has been following up with uh, some of the rainfall totals and also the track of the storm as it continues to work through. Yeah, kind of going almost north now. A little bit. It was going more northeast on and it looks like the past few hours going north uh, through the sound. So we'll show you on uh, the uh, satellite pictures of the uh, hurricane. Uh, good job, Don and Steve and uh, John and Barbara and everybody through the morning hours been uh, keeping up with you at home. But uh, here's a tropical satellite. Here's the hurricane. You can see the uh, center of circulation now going through the sounds. Uh, made landfall, as you know, around Cape Lookout earlier this morning, just a few hours ago, uh, heading almost due north now. So it should go through the western sounds, then continue up into northeastern North Carolina. Notice, too, as Don and Steve have been pointing out on this storm, over the uh, southern side of the storm, much drier. You notice the northern extent all the way up to New York, where the rain's beginning, but to the south, it cuts off. A lot of dry air getting entrained into the hurricane. That's good news because that means conditions will improve pretty rapidly this afternoon as the center of circulation goes on by. And you can see that on water vapor. What this is showing us is where the dry areas and where the moist areas and where you see those yellows and oranges down into Florida and Georgia, that's dry air that's become entrained into the hurricane. And that really helped us in terms of the strengthening of the storm. It kept it from becoming any stronger. It actually weakened. Two things happened to uh, Irene to weaken it, that dry air getting into the storm and also uh, strong southwest winds aloft shearing the southern part of the storm off. So here's that track now. As it moves out of North Carolina. We see improving conditions here, but things go downhill. This will just skirt the coast of uh, New Jersey, Delaware, and uh, still projected landfall just to the east of uh, downtown New York over western Long Island and then up through western Massachusetts. So even though it'll either be a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane as it makes its way towards the northeast late tonight and tomorrow, it'll still cause uh, major problems with flooding and potential storm surge. And here we go with our AccuWeather Predictor forecast model. Notice by this evening, the last of the rain bands begin to move out of the region and we start to dry out pretty quickly, especially already drying out Southern Pines, Rayford, those areas. It's been a, a real sharp cutoff in the rainfall amounts across the viewing area, as we talked about, with uh, parts of the triangle uh, getting as much as an inch or more and in Wake County and you get back towards, uh, say, uh, Orange and into Chatham County, very little rain so far. Here's a look at the uh, rainfall forecast as we uh, head to the north of east of us. They're in the, that line of five plus inches, so flash flood water. Uh, watches and warnings up for the northeast and you see those winds of 40 miles per hour or plus. A lot of folks have moved here from the northeast, have uh, big concerns for uh, their relatives or their uh, friends back home, and uh, it's going to be a rough go of it. Not as bad as it could have been for places like New York and Boston, but still uh, some rough weather coming up as that hurricane makes its way towards towards the north and northeast. We're at 76 now with the north wind at 18. The highest wind gust in the triangle has been, at RDU anyway, has been in the 40 plus range, but uh, higher 50 plus to the uh, east of the triangle as we talked about. And uh, again, conditions improving pretty quickly uh, late this afternoon into this evening and tomorrow looks to be a great day we'll have uh, through the afternoon the seven day but uh, tomorrow lots of sun john and barbara temperatures in the low 90s and i think next week we don't have to talk about hurricanes for a while anyway which would be nice there's nothing else out there in the atlantic to worry about at this point and the temperatures look pretty good next week yeah actually it's gonna get hot tomorrow and that happens a lot in a hurricane once it goes by you know all the air is rising into this storm now and then when it moves away the air starts to sink and when you get sinking air that brings clearing skies it also brings warm temperatures so we could easily be in the low 90s tomorrow but then as we uh, work our way through the week uh, a couple of fronts will come through and we're into the 80s with lows in the 60s so I think that intense heat that we uh, suffered through this summer is uh, pretty much over and we're heading into September 
fall like weather's on the way. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Not to bring anybody down, but the Pamlico County manager, Tim Buck, says that Pamlico County is having the worst flooding ever. Wow. Uh, worse than Hurricane Isabel in September of 2003. So. Sorry about that, but yeah. uh, that's the way it goes. You know, and we, we talked about that with uh, with this hurricane that that even though it was weakening into a category one wind wise, it would have a stronger storm surge than you normally expect with a category one storm because it was so big. Mm -hmm. It spent all that time in the Atlantic as a category three, just just displacing so much of the ocean that even though it came ashore with winds of 85 miles per hour sustained, the storm surge is more like a high end category two potentially, which can be devastating. That's what happened with Katrina. It was a category five in the mm -hmm. Gulf of Mexico, and then it weakened to a three, mm -hmm. but it had a storm surge of a five, 30 foot wall of water. Barbara, you know, your family in Alabama can attest to that, and uh, and uh, Mississippi, a 30 foot wall of water. That's Incredible. right, and then the levees broke, which made it even a more <laughs> devastating situation. Exactly. So that happens sometimes with these storms that the winds go down, but the storm surge does not follow suit as it comes ashore. And speaking of Pamlico County, you're seeing a picture right there from Pamlico County, the worst flooding, they say, according to the county manager ever worse than Hurricane Isabel in 2003. Hmm. You're watching special coverage of this hurricane, Irene, going on right now. We'll be back with more right after this. Look at this video we shot er just a little while ago. Uh, you'll see that the power is affected, of course, stoplights. So uh, police are trying to make sure that people don't have a problem with that. And there's some low-lying flooding. You see some flooding here uh, along the Intracoastal Waterway roads there. Now, police are uh, at the bridge, at the drawbridge over to Wrightsville, trying to stop traffic. And there's a long line of traffic of people stretching back to into Wilmington that are trying to get back over here. And some of them aren't too happy that they can't, but uh, right now, they're, they are checking IDs and apparently letting some people over. Those uh, over here, those people are looking for uh, any kind of damage they might have. We haven't heard any reports of any significant damage at this point, but I'm sure there's going to be some. Uh, once those people get back in, then uh, uh, they can come out on the beach like others have. We've already had some surfers out this morning uh, in the in the surf, but uh, that was before the beach patrol was out here. I'm sure the beach patrol is trying to keep people out of the surf right now. Uh, in fact, we talked with one uh, park ranger for Wrightsville Beach about what he had been seeing as he drove up and down the beach. We might have gotten lucky on this one. Last night, uh, it was extremely high. Um, they did kind of wash out in some areas and uh, it's still coming in now. It's pretty high now. Okay, we're having a little trouble with our communication, too. As you can imagine, uh, cell phones are kind of iffy out here. A lot of things are iffy. The one thing that's not iffy is that the sea is uh, coughing up her bounty. You see all that debris out there. Those are all shells, some of them pretty nice. People have been out, like we showed you a minute ago, really checking it out. Uh, photographer Chris Hart, who's been working tireless with me since we got down here Wednesday morning, uh, noted that low tide seems especially low right now, and we're getting real close to low tide here. And it just seems lower than normal. Um, in fact, it seemed eerily low at one point. Uh, you know, you've seen those pictures, John and Barbara, when the tsunami's coming about how the, the water pulls way back. Um, I'm sure we don't have anything like that, but it's just kind of eerie to see that uh, when the water was up here so high. And speaking of the water being up high, you know, we had high tide this morning right when the storm was right on us, but it really didn't cause that much damage. In fact, the damage you see here was caused last night's high tide at the beginning of the storm. And and again, this is pretty bad. I mean, some of the dune washed away, but the dune only came out to here. So, you know, it could have been much, much worse. And I've said this all morning, and I'll say it again now. I think if you'd have told the people uh, on the southern beaches of North Carolina 24 hours ago that this would be the extent of the damage we'd see initially, they'd probably been happy with that. Uh, we do have some reports. Uh, I've talked to some folks uh, down, down in Oak Island area. Apparently some streets and roads are flooded down there. Rental agencies are trying to get around to properties and check on them and they're not able to get to everything but the biggest problem down there is power outage uh, my my brother John and Barbara is in a town in Brunswick County called Boiling Spring Lakes and uh, they've been out with power about the same amount of time we've been out without power here several hours now or at least a few hours and he said most of the whole town as far as he knows is without power so uh, that's definitely uh, one of going to be the probably the 
one of the biggest issues on the southern beaches with this storm is getting the power back on, getting everybody back in, and then trying to assess what the damage is. And of course, we'll be watching out for all that. We have uh, crews out right now doing that very thing, looking. And so far, we haven't seen anything really, really bad. And we'll just keep our fingers crossed. You never know with these things until they're totally clear and the police can get out and the public can get back. Sometimes you don't find out about things uh, that have happened until way late. But uh, we're keeping an eye on it. And, and all in all, I, I just think, you know, for the southern beaches anyway, it, it looks like that uh, this could have been a whole lot worse than it was. And uh, we're grateful for that. Indeed. Ed Crump live on Riceville Beach. Thank you, Ed. And you know, as Ed was saying, You're welcome. a lot of those management companies, they're trying to get out and assess the, the properties. Mm -hmm. And experts are saying, if you've got properties on the beach, get your information first from your management company because you're not going to be able to get there. And still in New Hanover County, where Ed is, you had this story a couple of hours ago, but I just got to read it, it again. This is our best story. <laughs> uh, New Hanover County Hospital is reporting 12 deliveries during the storm. That is 30% higher than usual. <laughs> and at least two of those babies will have the middle name Irene, at least two. Not, not first name, but middle name. So some good is coming out of this. Hurricane babies. <laughs> Okay. We're going to take another break. More hurricane coverage right after this. We're going to check back with our team of meteorologists. Welcome back to our special coverage of Hurricane Irene. And we've been talking about the storm ever since, well, what, Wednesday of this past week? Yes. Maybe Tuesday? Even before Monday. that, yeah. Monday? Monday. All right. And it's good. <laughs> we're going to be talking about it for some more time, too. That's right. Matt Mendez is in Nags Head right now, and he joins us live via broadband from Breaking News 1. Matt, what's going on now? Well, Barbara, good afternoon. Things start picking up here in Nags Head. Wind gusts have increased considerably. We're also starting to see some more rain. You're looking live right now as officials at the Nags Head Fire Department have blocked off this road, this is our 264, it's right out of town. And because the winds have uh, picked up so dramatically, you can see they're, I uh, think, about out of here at this point. Uh, they have blocked off the road, at least temporarily, because of a down tower line. And you see they are, uh, you'll see in a few seconds as they're leaving here, because the winds have picked up. But a transformer pole, which you can see in the uh, top left corner of your screen, is completely snapped in half. And that has caused a number of power outages now in Nags Head from uh, traffic signals to buildings, businesses in the area, many of which were closed anyway. But uh, right now, officials have this road blocked off. This is the road out of town. Uh, no one can bypass it right now because that power line is lying in the roadway. Uh, right now, you can see there are a couple of uh, do, uh, Dare County, that is, uh, public works folks on the scene uh, thinking about trying to maybe at least de-energize it, get it out of the road. Uh, but again, winds are picking up considerably as the back end of the storm starts moving toward the area. So we anticipate that a lot of these vehicles are going to this area after uh, storm. But just because the shot, this thing's not over, it is increasing in power as the back end moves through, and it is now causing some noticeable damage here uh, in the Nagshead area. We'll stay on top of it as long as we see to do so. But uh, if the winds pick up any more than uh, they have now, we have to get off the roads as well. So right now, we'll send it back to you. All right, Matt Mendez, live in Nagshead. Thank you. Right now, new reports coming in from Kitty Hawk on the Outer Bank and near Atlantic Beach where the storm came ashore this morning. Now you can see, you were talking about that flooding in the reports. Here it is. Now, this is not the Atlantic Ocean, TJ. The Atlantic Ocean is on the other side. What you're looking at here is houses that are about underwater in places. And this is the Bogue Sound. You can see that. You're looking out right now at the Bogue Sound that has come inland here. And there goes the camera. You can feel the wind and the rain. I mean, we have waves literally racing inland. Now, this is what we call reverse storm surge. The wind direction changed, TJ. So now the sound is being pushed from the west to the east here and driving all of this water inland here along Atlantic Beach. The road is impassable now in a lot of places. You can't, uh, you can't traverse the island in many, many places, and the water's getting higher. Two houses down over here, TJ. The um, garage is about a third underwater. Not this house, but that next house over. And you can see how, as I'm standing out here, the water is up above my knees here. So I'm literally now standing in Bogue Sound. And I can tell you that there may be places, TJ, down on the western side where in the sound. That happens with hurricanes, where they will literally 
push all of the water out of the sound or the inlet, and I, I have seen crab traps. This is the town of Kitty Hawk. It's not too far from here where the Bright Brothers made their famous first flight. About the only thing flying out here today is sand that's blasting past you and the rain that continues to sting when it hits. We've seen some minor street flooding and on the way here, we saw the fire department out going house to house, checking gas tanks, propane tanks, to make sure that they were all still secure. But other than that, no sign of life out here. Most people continuing to heed warnings and stay inside. We're going to walk over the dune right now to see what the ocean looks like. The wind in here is gusting sort of between the tropical storm level and the hurricane level. But well, look, there's no beach whatsoever out here. The ocean is right at the back door of all these houses. Really here. You can see how rough the surf is. High tide passed quite a while ago. I'm actually surprised to see the water up still this high. But you can see just how rough it is. It's really just pounding away, eroding the beach that's out there. But fortunately, at this point, it doesn't seem to be breaking through the dunes. A lot of this sand has been pushed in here just for events like this to bolster the dunes and make sure that the water doesn't get through. So far, they're holding. Take a look this way. Nothing but foam. The sea is absolutely white, just all churned up, whipped by this wind. And again, we're getting hit with some of those strong gusts right now. If it's blowing any harder, it won't be difficult to stand up out here. But the good news here so far, officials we've talked to said no serious damage to report yet. Fingers crossed because the worst of the storm And that wasn't the worst of the storm. Mm -mm. Those are some CNN reporters. This is a national story, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be out there all afternoon doing stuff like that. Caitlin Corner and Nags had said they were global reporters. Mm -hmm. So it is a big story being watched by a lot of people. Um, we have a boat that is on a trailer, but the trailer and the boat are both floating against the side of the house. Um, we have a camper that was sitting from the north to the south, and now it's going east and west floating. I think it's the worst one I have ever stayed here in. I've stayed here in many. <laughs> but this one, I think I should have left. Never seen the waves that big out there. They're, they're like the ocean compared to what we're used to. Starting to set in, Irene doing some real damage on the Carolina coast and inland with reports of damage as far west as Raleigh. And here's a live look at Irene on the satellite. Still a massive storm and is now moving northeast, but it will be hours before it is out of here and, and we don't have to worry about it bringing in a lot of rain. Good afternoon, I'm Tisha Powell. Irene made landfall around 7.30 this morning at Cape Lookout as the Category 1 storm. We have crews posted up and down the coast, and it's once again kicking up on the Outer Banks. Let's go to Fred Shropshire, who is in Kill Devil Hills. Fred. Yeah, Larry, yeah, we're getting a, a pretty heavy winds right now. Uh, as you can see, the stuff is blowing around. You can see the signs right there rocking back and forth. Power lines uh, shaking back and forth, and we're seeing debris fly uh, up and down. Uh, this is Virginia Dare right down here. Uh, but, um, yeah, there's very light traffic. We've seen emergency response vehicles patrolling the area to make sure that people are not out here. You're going to get stopped uh, if you're out here, if you're anybody other than the media or anybody with an emergency response crew. And look at the sand over here. I want to show you this. This is just the view of what the sand is. This is one reason why we're not standing on the beach feels like you're getting exfoliated. I mean, a sandblaster across your face, across your exposed skin, just uh, perilous uh, conditions on the beach. Though you can see a lot of the beach because the storm made it through here uh, initially uh, during uh, the low tide. But swing it back around this way, Nick, for me. Uh, and you can see uh, 
thir uh, 30 miles from the eye wall uh, is uh, what we're seeing about now. So we're kind of like back and forth between calm and, and heavy gust. Uh, but these signs right here, these real estate signs, this is a danger right here. This is why people uh, should stay away, should stay uh, out of these conditions. Uh, because once these things are plucked up, they become missiles, they become projectiles that can seriously injure you, can kill you even. Uh, but um, we took a drive down the street here and we saw a lot of... Uh, damages to fences, uh, street signs. Uh, we saw a basketball sign that was just twisted up and uh, broken like a toothpick. Uh, but that is the kind of damage we're seeing here. Uh, at this time, about roughly 30,000 people uh, here are without electricity. Uh, we understand that uh, because of some uh, flooding from uh, the ocean side, uh, some of the water, uh, they've ordered a boil order for some of the residents here to uh, boil their water so that it would be safe for consumption. Uh, that's something that usually happens. They, uh, they, they basically ramp down the water uh, to keep water mains from breaking when you have flooding. But you can just see, look at this, look at these uh, power poles just rocking back and forth as you see all of this stuff here. But fortunately, we don't have any reports of injuries and the conditions aren't bad enough they, they're not bad enough to where uh, the emergency crews, if something were to happen to someone, they say they could still respond. Typically, when they order these mandatory evacuations, it's because they can't respond to you if you choose to stay. Uh, but the conditions haven't gotten that bad quite yet. But still, they're advising people to stay out here. You're probably looking at some pictures now that we uh, recorded earlier of the damage that we saw when we uh, were driving around the area. Again, we saw just... Uh, minor damage, localized damage uh, to homes, shingles off, uh, fences broken, uh, that kind of thing, but nothing major. Uh, the big concern is that we get on the tail end of the eye wall that you're going to see some flooding in the sound. Uh, they really, really got hammered back in 2003 with Hurricane Isabel. When that, uh, when that storm came through, it basically sucked all of the water uh, out of the sound and, and ran the water onto the street. So you had impassable streets. Uh, you had a lot of damage. You had a lot of beach erosion. So that's the major concern is that you're going to get impassable roads, uh, the power outages, which we've already seen, and structural damage, which we've uh, surveyed uh, a little bit since we've been out here. But those are the latest conditions out here. We're expecting the wind to probably pick up a little bit more uh, significantly, actually, uh, as the eye wall passes through uh, this part of Kill Devil Hills. Larry, Tisha. All right, Fred, dangerous work you're doing out there. Stay safe. We'll be back to you in a little bit. Yeah, we've got some more information that's going on around the area dealing with Irene. Steve Daniels is of folks who had parked in and around the downtown area and the water was over the windows of their vehicles. Uh, we're showing right now at about three feet of storm surge as the wind began begins receding some of that water. Uh, right now we're engaged in a couple of water rescues. We still have numerous power outages. Uh, we only really have one electric feeder line uh, that is currently working uh, to power customers. Uh, what we're doing right now is prioritizing um, areas where we have trees and debris down that are blocking roadways. And once we can get some of our public works crews out there to start getting rid of that debris and clearing the roadways, then we can finally send back out those electric crews who can begin to restore power. Colleen, we have reports that Highway 70 has been closed. We've been trying to get our news crews into New Bern to take a look at what's going on, but because of downed trees and downed power lines and blocked roadways and Highway 70 being shut down, we can't get our crews in there. So you are a critical uh, resource for us to help us understand what's going on. Tell us more about those water rescues you have going on right now. You have people who are trapped inside their homes. We have folks who um, span the gamut. There have been a lot of areas that uh, just tend to be low-lying, and historically they will receive flooding during, um, you know, starting with just a bad summer rainstorm to certainly to hurricanes. We had earlier today several calls from the Woodrow neighborhood, which is off of Oaks Road in New Bern, um, people saying, you know, water's getting into my house, and I'm realizing that I need to evacuate. We, we deployed a, a heavy-duty um, City of New Bern bus. We went over there and knocked on doors, went door to door asking people who wanted to get out, you know, grab what you can and, and we'll take you to a safe facility. We had about 30 people who boarded the bus from that area. Again, this was the Woodrow neighborhood. We also have um, a multi-story, five-story uh, um assisted living complex, also in what tends to be a low-lying area in New Bern. Um, 
And this is called Weatherstone Park. And they were seeing a lot of rain coming in the windows, um, shingles coming off of the complex. Uh, they have a series of homes over there that are adjoining one-story homes. Uh, the water was coming in. Several of those folks uh, needed to be evacuated and taken to a shelter as well. Um, so lots of people who, during the height of the storm, and those um, Noose River was rising and some of our canals were rising, and they discovered, hey, you know, my feet are wet, water's coming in, I'm scared, I'm nervous, I need to get out of here. Um, so we have a couple of those that are still taking place. Um, primarily what we're dealing with is just numerous, numerous power outages at this hour. And you say the floodwaters have now uh, receded to three feet. You have about three feet of storm surge now? Yes, three feet uh, as it stands right now. Uh, first thing this morning, though, we started at just over seven feet. So it was a pretty precarious and, and serious situation uh, in downtown New Bern. And in the evening high tide, is there is there any concern that, that uh, as the tide goes up uh, out uh, in the ocean, that that will uh, push more water through the Pamlico Sound, up the Noose River, and into New Bern? Or, are you, or, or do, you, do you feel like you've, uh, you have the worst of this storm surge behind you now? We really feel like we have the worst of the storm surge behind us. We do see, um, you know, negligible tidal changes in the Noose River on a normal basis. Of course, with the storm, um, you know, they're, they're constantly uh, situations that surprise you. So it is something we will stay on top of. Um, we will keep our emergency operations center uh, fully staffed and operating uh, through the evening. So it's something we will stay on top of. We have some regional resources, uh, an aquatics rescue team that uh, was staged in Kinston, uh, who has now been involved with some of those water rescues with us and will be available with us through the night in case we need more of it. And Colleen Roberts is the public information officer for the city of New Bern. Uh, Colleen, a lot of us here in the Triangle and in our viewing area love to go to downtown New Bern. It's a, it's a beautiful, uh, old, historic part of North Carolina. We love to visit there. How's the downtown area faring through this? The downtown has uh, suffered some... some structural damage. We have some shingles that we've heard have come off of businesses and, and other minor things like that. We haven't heard of any major structural damage so far. I will tell you, sitting here in, in City Hall on Craven Street, we've seen limbs uh, just flying down Craven Street uh, towards the riverfront. So it's been quite a picture through the storm, uh, but hopefully we're we're on the other side of it and we'll see things get a little better here. But it's it's been interesting. We, we lost a couple of windows at City Hall and it it was kind of scary to hear them crash down to the ground during the storm, but 